you for your goodness. Father, we thank you for your kindness. Oh, oh Holy Spirit, we need you now. Holy Spirit, we need you now. Lead us now, lead us. Oh, Lembra kandosh kalamando rosande liba, i kalandosh kele bande librosa yada baskele ba. Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our lives, in our homes. Speak to us now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I greet you all, brothers and sisters. It's an honor to speak to you. I am David, a pastor at I am Church. I'm so excited to be sharing the word of God here on Restoring Word. Today we are starting a new series. It's called Leaders Are Builders. Leaders Are Builders. If you can, take someone, invite someone and say hashtag lab. Leaders Are Builders. We'll be covering a four-part message. Today we want to talk about discovering leaders. Next time we'll talk about developing leaders. And we'll talk about deploying leaders. And then we'll close with duplicating leaders or raising a successor. I'm so excited to talk about developing leaders. Everything that is around us, if we see good things, is because of the leaders. Jesus says in Matthew 9, verse 37, the harvest is great. Truly, the harvest is plenty. All we need is laborers. It's, he says, pray and ask the Lord of the harvest to send more laborers. We know that in the kingdom of God, laborers are workers. Laborers are people who are serving at church. John Maxwell says, leadership is influence. Everything rises and falls on a leader. You are strong as your leadership team. When you want to grow your organization, you need to focus on growing your leaders. And how do you grow your leaders? By growing yourself. Every, it's very important. You need to grow yourself. Every believer is a leader in the making. You are a leader in the making. The Bible says you are the light of the world. Matthew 5 verse 14. The Bible says you are the teacher of the word. In Hebrews 5 verse 12. If you are a light, you are an influencer. If you are a teacher, you are an influencer. That makes you a leader. You just need to grow into a level where you become a good and effective leader. Leadership is maturity. And then it begins with taking responsibility. Every time when you take responsibility, you show the signs of leadership. Anyone can be a leader, male or female. Leadership has no gender. Leadership has no race. Leadership has no age. Anyone can rise and be influential. Anyone can rise and uh, uh, take responsibility. Leadership begins with yourself. Somebody asked me, how do I become a leader? You lead yourself. Set goals, set a vision, follow your goals, follow the vision. And then as you lead yourself to success, you can also do the same thing, lead others. But here we are talking about leadership in a church because uh, the body of Christ needs more leaders like never before. We've seen our forefathers, people who, are, who have been preaching the gospel, who have gone ahead of us. Some of them are older, some are retiring, some are going to be with the Lord. Now there is uh, young preachers that are rising, and those preachers, they need leaders. You need to work with leaders. So leadership is serving. To be a leader, it means you are a servant. In Matthew 20, verse 25, Jesus explained this thing that in the world, the Gentiles are lords or they are bosses. They, they lead with authority. Uh, uh, they are lordship over the people. But in the kingdom of God, at church, leaders are servants. If you are a pastor like myself, I am a chief servant, which means I am a leader of leaders or I am a servant of servants. Another version of the Bible says you are a slave. I serve people. I'm the first one to come at church. I'm the last one to leave. I serve everyone uh, because I am a leader. The first sign of being a leader is humility. Okay? Humility. And how do you see humility? Uh, uh, humility, you see it by serving people. Every time when you serve people, you are showing the sign of humility. Great leaders love serving. Poor leaders love to be served. Humility does not come naturally, all right? And every time when you want to be humble, 
you must be intentional about it. In fact, you can learn to be humble. You can learn to serve people. You can learn to put people first. Every time when you put people first, that is humility. Before you even call the people at church to lead, you need to pray. The Bible says in a, in a book of Luke 6, 12, Jesus spent a whole night praying, uh, uh, praying before he appointed his 12 disciples. So before you appoint people, you need to pray about it. Ask the Lord, is this the right person? Is this the person supposed to be chosen now? And the timing is very important. Effective leadership is teamwork. So when you are praying for people, you are praying for people who enjoy working in a team. You enjoy serving people. So you need to appoint leaders and assistant leaders. We see Jesus is sending out uh, his disciples, 70 leaders, in the book of Luke 10, verse 1. He sent them two by two. Why it's important to have a leader and an assistant is so that when a leader is not available, somebody else can work. When a leader is busy at home, when a leader is not well, when a leader has deadline at work, the, other, the assistant can run with work. Amen. So it's important not to lead by yourself. As a pastor at IM Church, I am leading with other pastors. I'm leading with Prophet Norm, I'm leading with Pastor Awam. Uh, we are a leadership team. They get to help me pray for people. They get to help me intercede for people. They get to help me to teach. So we are a leadership team. So dear pastor or dear manager or dear leader, do not lead by yourself. You need people to assist you. Leaders must grow and produce good results. So leaders must grow. So a leader who's not growing will struggle to produce good results. We have seen people being stagnant for five years. You are leading the same position. You don't, you're not getting a promotion. You're not getting good results. It's time to grow. But now I want to give you some tips. Seven ways or simple ways for you to grow. How to grow. How to learn and grow. Uh, the research has shown that 10% of what you read, you will learn and remember. 10%. And 20% of what uh, 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 um, you, 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 you hear, you will remember. So if you hear something, 20% you, you, of it, you are likely to remember it. 30% of what you see, you will remember. You will learn and you will remember. 50% um, of what you see and hear. Wow. If you hear, see it, that's why movies, when you watch a movie, you're likely to remember the lines. You're likely to remember all the different scenes in a movie. Why? Because you can see it and you can hear it. 50% of what you see and hear, you will learn and do remember. 70% of what you discuss, all right? If you can sit in a group with friends and discuss, you, you would remember 70% of that discussion. 80% of what you experience, you would learn and you will not forget. You would remember. If you, if you have drinking uh, a, a particular drink, a soft drink, or you have drink a coffee, you would remember the taste, the smell. Why? Because you have experienced it. So things that we experience, we tend to remember. 95% of what you teach, you will never forget. Wow. If you become a teacher, maybe you are teaching a believer's class, you are teaching a home cell, whatever you are teaching, a Bible study, you tend to remember everything. Why? Because you need to study it first. You need to look at it. You need to think about it. You need to then teach other people. So 95% of what you teach, you will learn and then you'll remember. Hebrews 5 verse 12, uh, Paul says, by now you ought to be a teacher. Every Christian, you start as a spiritual baby. You grow, you become a spiritual, you become a disciple, which is a leader. Then you must up, grow and become a, a teacher or a preacher. A preacher, you don't have to be a pastor at church. You can be uh, a, a teacher at, at school you, uh, by having a student ministry. You can have a, a home cell in your house. You can have a prayer meeting at work. Whatever it is, as long as you are teaching the word, you are growing to become a teacher. Amen. Now, how to discover leaders? Most pastors, they would say, uh, we just don't have good leaders at church. And I'm here to tell you, God will always give you what you need at a particular time that you need them. So there are a few ways. I'm going to give you just five ways of how to discover leaders. Number one, give everyone a chance to lead. Some leaders don't appear like leaders, but give them a chance. Leadership has no gender. It has no race. You know, it has no age. Give people a chance. Number two, believe that everyone has something positive and something good to offer. Do not cut people off. Do not be quick 
to cut a leader off. A leader who makes a mistake and say, you're no longer a leader, give them a chance. In fact, I always like to say, reposition, uh, retrain, uh, uh, before you actually uh, ask a person maybe to be excused. Do not cut people off. Give them a chance to grow and to do better. Uh, very important. Start with small tasks. Do not give a person a huge task where they've got this heavy burden. Remember, they just want to serve the Lord. They just want to have a, a relationship with God. Responsibilities can be heavy on leaders. So start with small responsibilities. When they do well, upgrade. Give them more responsibility. Number three, how to discover leaders. Don't judge a book by its cover. I've already said this. Leadership has no appearance. A leader, you know, is appointed uh, uh, by his availability, willing, willingness to serve, willingness to learn. Leadership has no appearance. You can't say, oh, this person speaks well. They should be a leader. Oh, this person dress up so well. They should be a leader. Oh, this person has money. They should be a leader. Leadership, especially in a house of God, it, all, it has to do with humility. Willing to serve people. Willing to learn when you are taught. Willing to be available for people. So, uh, don't judge a book by its cover. It's not about looks. It's not about the bank account. It's not about connection. It's not even about eloquency of the speech. You remember Moses. He says, I can't speak well. God knew that Moses was stuttering or he could not speak well. But yet he chose him for one of the great jobs to lead the people out of Israel. So God is not looking at your English. God is not looking at your eloquency. He's looking at your availability. Amen. Number four, how to discover leaders. You must focus on developing leaders or always look out for leaders. Always we spoke on the previous uh, 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 lessons. We're talking about how to recruit. We talk about how to build. You know, it is very important now that you don't just look for a team. You're looking for that individual that will help you. Focus on leaders. When Jesus uh, prayed for, for the whole night, he went and looked for leaders. He was not trying to recruit a church. He was not inviting people. He was not. Be he just went for 12 people. And then he spent most of his ministry time three years to four years on earth he was having a lot of private sessions with them where he explained the parable he was telling them uh, uh, uh breaking down the scriptures it is important for a leader to spend time with his leadership team it's important for a manager to spend time with his leaders important for a pastor to spend time with his elders with his deacons and with your leaders so focus on leaders number five which is the last one now Develop leaders uh, 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 so that they can develop others. So leadership is you are leading, you are leading someone who's going to lead others. Now I want to explain this thing. There is no last number in the house of God. So when I win someone, they come, they become a baby in a lot. I teach them, they grow, they become a disciple, which means a leader. And I teach them, they become a teacher. When they become a teacher, we become co-laborers. All right, co-laborers. You cannot be a papa of all everyone else. Everyone must kiss your ring. You are the one who's above everybody else. Because people grow. You know, Paul says, uh, 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 it's neither the one who plants, neither the one uh, who watches, but it's God who gives growth. Some of the people you led to Christ, they are growing, and some of them even receive uh, a calling and lead a ministry. While you have not received the ministry, they have outgrown you because now they have become teachers so remember every time when you are leading people you are leading a future leader when you are training someone you are training a future trainer it's wonderful amen jesus says now you are, you are no longer strangers you are no longer servants now you are my brothers we are co-laborers isn't it wonderful that our lord and savior can raise us up and call us co-laborers but we as people, you always want to be the leader forever. When do you raise people? When do you make people rise within your ministry? Ordain them, appoint them, and make sure that they are able to run and they are able to assist you. You cannot lead by yourself. You need to share some of that authority. Amen. So I want to pray now, and I want to pray for every leader. I want to pray for every pastor. Listen to me, pastor. You cannot lead by yourself. You cannot do ministry by yourself. You need someone to help you. You need someone to come in and to, uh, 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 to help you grow the church and grow the ministry. 
Very important. So I want us to pray now. As I pray, I realize that some pastors, they are probably hurt by their leaders. People disappointed you. You trained them. You raised them. They, 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 maybe they have left you or whatever reason. But I want to pray that you forgive them. It's very important as a pastor to know that this is not your church. This is our Lord Jesus' church. We are just caretakers. You know, a chief shepherd is our Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm a shepherd, I'm just given a little task. These are not my people. If you are praying for somebody and they are healed, it's not by your stripes that they are healed. It is by Jesus' stripes. He was wounded. He was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes, we are healed. So when you are praying for someone, you're just standing in a gap. But Jesus is a healer. If somebody gets a job, don't say, Pastor, don't say, you came in this church, you didn't have a job, I prayed for you, it is my anointing. It is not your anointing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. Who is giving you anointing? Is the Holy Spirit. So, as we are serving, as we are raising leaders, let's do it with kindness. Let's do it with fear. Let's work at our salvation with trembling. Because when Jesus comes, as a pastor, I want to hear the Lord say, well done. The good and faithful servant. We want to hear Jesus says, well done to me. And we want to hear Jesus says, well done to you. So I'm going to pray now. If you're a leader, maybe, or you're an elder, you have done wrong, uh, I want to encourage you to apologize. It starts from there. Say, I'm sorry. Learn to ask for forgiveness and ask to restart and ask uh, 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 that you are given a chance again. I, we, you know, we serve people as much as we are serving God. So, sometimes when you have a friction with people, you can't just go to God and repent to God and never say sorry to the people that you are leading. If you have done something wrong uh, in your team, go and apologize to that person. So, I want to just pray right now. And wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes. But make a choice that I'm going to change. Make a choice that I'm going to repent. Make a choice that I will join and be a team. Can I pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for my brother. I thank you for my sister right now. Even as we end, Father, God, this teaching, I pray, Lord God, that you will heal those who are hurt. You will heal those who are wounded. You will, oh God, you will remove that heavy burden of guilt, of shame, of condemnation. I pray that you come back to the Lord. I pray that from today you turn and you come back to Jesus. Forgive those who have hurt you. Let go of that pain. Let go of that hurt. Dear Pastor, forgive. Let God heal you. Let's continue to work. When Jesus comes, let him say well done to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to say uh, to those who are not born again, I want to just say to you, uh, give your life to Jesus. And I want to ask you that you uh, say this prayer after me. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have never been born again, you have never committed your life to Jesus, I want you to pray and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life, heal me, save me, and then I want to be a new person. Please say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died and you rose again for my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from my sins. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Write my name in a book of life. Today, I want to be born again. Today, I want to be saved. Father, I thank you for my brother, my sister, who has committed their lives to you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill them and their lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.